Hi and uh, welcome again to another Advent devotional. Um, keeping well, I hope you are, uh, that our eyes are upon him who uh, is looking after us. Uh, so keep your eyes upward, uh, rejoice in him, uh, as it says in Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice well, uh, today we are going to look at this, uh, Messenger Will Prepare the Way, and we're going to read from Malachi. Uh, no, I'm doing some readings from the Bible. You can find, uh, that I, I've read the whole book of Malachi on uh, the YouTube channel if you find it, and uh, just listen through, it doesn't take long to listen to. Um, but here is today's reading, so it's Malachi 3, 1-4, and then chapter 4, 5 and 6, it says this. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will, sudden, will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter desolation. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as with yesterday, uh, there is obviously a distinct overtone of John the Baptist, uh, because that's exactly who uh, Malachi prophesies about. But he also prophesies about Elijah, and uh, Jesus says uh, about John the Baptist, he is Elijah if you accept it. Um, but of course, uh, Elijah, the real Elijah, will also turn up towards the end times because we know that because of course, uh, whereas he, Elijah and Moses were up on the Mount of Transfiguration, of course, um, and and both Moses and Elijah feature in the end time as the two witnesses in Jerusalem. Uh, who, well, will be calling people back to repentance, but people will refuse them. But anyway, so John is sent ahead as a herald before Jesus to prepare the way. And indeed, some of John's disciples became disciples of Jesus, one of which was Andrew, uh, the first of Jesus' disciples, actually. Uh, and he was Peter's brother. And Andrew brought Peter to uh, Jesus. In fact, Peter's name before he was brought to Jesus was Simon and uh, it was Jesus who called him Cephas and that was translated as Peter. Um, then Malachi continues then to speak not of Jesus' first advent but of the second. Uh, in fact it's upon this I want to spend a little time. I recently watched some court cases um, on TV in America about uh, those who um, are guilty and uh, they're waiting to be sentenced. And in one case, a young woman who thought um, that uh, she's going to get out on probation, uh, misunderstanding a plea deal that she had made, said the judge gave her 20 years in jail. She thought she was going to be set free and instead she got 20 years. A year later, just to fill in on that particular case, it got reduced down to 10 on appeal because of the misunderstanding. But it's still a world away from what she expected. There are going to be many caught unawares on the day of the Lord, fully expecting to be let into heaven, but instead will end up in hell. And just as my heart went out to that woman, uh, for it seems to me that the sentencing was a bit harsh, um, as uh, American uh, courts do seem to be that way, <laughs> generally. Um, but they're going to be facing another harsh, everlasting life in prison, as it were. 
<clears throat> because God in his absolute holiness, God in his absolute righteousness, God in his absolute justice will cast away the majority because Jesus says few will be saved. And unfortunately, these are those which Malachi speaks of at the very end there, Malachi 4 verse 6, they will experience utter destruction. And, and the question then is, is raised in this passage, of course, who can stand when he comes? We certainly can't in our own righteousness. And so the only way that we can possibly stand before him, I'm not sure even then, uh, are those who have trusted completely in the robe of righteousness given by Jesus, by what he did for us on the cross. That's the only possible hope of escape. And even then we're told uh, by Peter himself in 1 Peter 4 verse 18, and I should be able to get that up on the screen. Um, <clears throat> and if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and sinner? The righteous is scarcely saved. Well, John the Baptist sought to turn hearts to God for them to be open to Jesus when he came. And surely that is now our mission. Uh, just as what Peter preached at Pentecost um, he says this, and uh, with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. And <laughs> that is a, a, just as a relevant message today as it was back then. Um, so let us then declare the good news, the reason for Christmas. Let us prepare hearts to receive Jesus Christ. Um, today's uh, carol um, is going to be Christians Awake. Um, it's, it's quite a longish carol, actually, um, but it has uh, some great words for us. Uh, let's hear what it has to say. Christians Awake, salute the happy morn, whereon the Saviour of the world was born. Rise to adore the mystery of love, which hosts of angels chanted from above. With them the joyful tidings were begun of God incarnate and the virgin son. Then to the watchful shepherds it was told, who heard the angelic, angelic herald's voice. Behold, I bring good tidings of a saviour's birth to you and all the nations on the earth. This day have God fulfilled his promised word. This day is born a saviour, Christ the Lord. He spake. And straightway the celestial choir in hymns of joy unknown before conspire. The praises of redeeming love they sang, and heaven whole orb with alleluias rang. God's highest glory was their anthem still, peace on the earth and unto men goodwill. To Bethlehem straight the happy shepherds ran to see the wonder God had wrought for man. I found with Joseph and the blessed maid her son, the saviour, in a manger laid. Amazed, the wondrous story they proclaim, the earliest heralds of the saviour's name. Oh, may we keep and ponder in our mind God's wondrous love in saving lost mankind. Trace we the babe who have retrieved our loss from his poor manger to his bitter cross. Tread in his steps, assisted by his grace, till our imperfect state God doth replace. Then may we hope the angelic throngs among to sing redeemed a glad triumphal song. He that was born upon this joyful day, around us all his glory shall display. Saved by his love, incessant we shall sing eternal praise to heaven's almighty King. Hallelujah. Um, so uh, that's a. Uh, uh, give him honour and praise. Uh, this hymn was written by Lord Byron, uh, so uh, that's a, uh, an interesting uh, story on his own. Go and look it up if you wish. Um, so I pray that you have a blessed day, but remember the reason uh, that uh, John the Baptist was sent was to prepare the way for Christ, and that is also what we need to be doing, preparing ourselves but also preparing others, sharing people, sharing with people the Christmas joy, the Christmas message 
and I hope that uh, you will join me in doing that. Amen. God bless you and see you tomorrow, God willing.